Hi, welcome back to another Baby Names video. If you're new to my channel, I'm Bex and I make videos with a cosy feel about family food and home. I have a real weakness for quirky, rare and unique baby names as well. So stick around if they're the sort of videos that you like the idea of and get yourself a brew, get yourself cosy and let's dive into these really quirky, unique and rare floral names. If you haven't watched part one of this video then you are in for a treat. There are loads of beautiful, romantic, rare, quirky flower names on that video and so I will leave it linked either up here somewhere or in the description box below. So let's crack on. I'm going to start off with a completely unranked name for you, just get you straight into them. And the first one is Freesia. Freesias are these gorgeous, quite delicate, but sculptural flowers. I think this name would appeal to you if you like the name Freya or Frida. I think there's something quite Scandinavian sounding about the name. And I think although it's quite a feminine name, I also think it sounds quite strong as well at the same time. What do you think of it? Quite a hippie sort of choice for you next, and the name is Tansy. I think this is a beautiful name. I absolutely love it. When I was a teacher, I taught someone who had the surname Tansy, and it always stood out to me. Um, I love the colour of these flowers, and there's something quite boho and woodland and hippie-ish about them. So if they're sort of values that appeal to you, then I think the name Tansy would also appeal. The name isn't completely unranked, but it is very rare. It's number 3,229 on the list, which means that only seven babies were named this last year. Though I do reckon it is one to watch um, just because it was completely unranked and then has sort of appeared on the list in the last year. So I think if you love it, but you're a bit unsure of it being too way out, I wouldn't worry overly because I do think it will stay unusual but it won't be unheard of and I do think it's just one of these floral names that although it's unusual and rare it isn't too way out there. The name Violet went through a real sort of hipster phase and became quite popular and so if you love the name Violet but you don't want to use it because it's become that bit more popular, how about the name Viola? A Viola is an alternative name for a pansy. I think it sounds elegant, it has an A ending so again it will go with a range of surnames and it is unusual isn't unheard of. It's number 899 on the list which means that 42 babies were named this last year. Another unranked name for you next, the name is Petula. Petula is one of these really versatile, quite clever names because Petula is another name for a marigold. I had marigold on the last video and that has seen a sharp rise because of Downton Abbey. And although I love the name Marigold and it wouldn't stop me from using it, if you want just something that's a little bit more rare and unique, then why not go for Petula because it has the same associations, the same flower, but is just completely different in terms of the way it sounds. I also think it's a really good alternative to the name Petal. If you love that name, but it's maybe a bit too way out for you, you can't convince you of the half of it. Or maybe you do love the name Petal, but maybe somebody has already got in there first or you're just a bit worried about it becoming too sort of trend led, then Petula would be a lovely alternative. The next name is definitely going to divide opinion. Um, it is a Marmite name and I think it's a Marmite name more because of the associations of the name than the name itself. I've built it up now, but the name is Hyacinth. I think Hyacinths are absolutely gorgeous flowers and I think hyacinth is completely underused as a name. Um, it's a, a great flower name. It's really feminine, but really strong at the same time. But it still has associations with the character of hyacinth from Keeping Up Appearances, the British sitcom. And so I think a generation of people have just steered completely away from this name. And it sort of reminds me of the name Karen in that um, there was a newspaper story the other day about someone um, naming their little girl Karen and being inundated by family and friends that saying don't go for the name because of the meme that's associated with it. Like the name Margot, there are sort of negative associations with it. However, the name has managed to sort of be shaken off and used again in a completely new generation who knew nothing about the sitcom. So why not use the name Hyacinth? 
what do you think of it? Okay, one of the stunners on my list next, the name is Magnolia. Again, completely unranked. You could easily shorten it to Maggie as well. Um, the beautiful associations with the flowers. I think this name is so crying out to be used. You would certainly be setting a trend using this name and I can't see it being unused for very long. Would you use it? Let me know in the comments what you think of the name Magnolia. A quirky choice for you next, the name is Ilex. Ilex is the Latin name given to Holly. Anyone who watches my videos regularly will know that I absolutely love Christmas and anything to do with autumn and winter. So I wanted to get some sort of Christmas associated name in here um, without using the name Holly or without using the name Hollis, which is another one of my favourites. So I thought I would go for Ilex. I've never heard anybody use it. It's completely unranked. I've never seen it on a baby name list, but I think it's so wearable. It's a great alternative to the name Alex or Alexa, which I don't think is going to be used because of the associations with Google Alexa. Great sort of Christmas choice without it being sort of smack you up the side of the head Christmas. Let me know what you think of it. The next name was on my baby name list though I don't think I would have ever had the courage to use it which is a shame because it says more about me than it does about the name. It is starting to be used more but I also think it's one that you need to really consider how well it goes with your surname just because I think it's it can be awkward in that it's not a name that will immediately go with lots of surnames. What about the name Bluebell? Bluebell is 836 on the list meaning 46 babies were named this last year. Jerry Halliwell famously named her daughter Bluebell and started the trend off for the name. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I even remember Jules Oliver, who designs the Little Bird range for mother care. She wrote a series of books called The Adventures of Dotty and Bluebell, which we can imagine I would absolutely love. So what do you think of the name Bluebell? Would you think you would be able to use it? Do you think it's still that bit too unwearable? Do you think it would be great for the middle name spot? Another really quirky unusual choice for you which is a flower name and a great alternative to, to the names Flora and Florence. How about the name Fiorella? Fiorella is 4063 on the list. I absolutely love how romantic and flowery sounding this name is. I think it's a great alternative to a name like Isabella and I can just imagine how beautiful it would be written in sort of curly loopy cursive handwriting. Oh, I absolutely love the name. I absolutely love the next name too, which is Cassia. Um, I think it's really wearable and it's a food name as well as being a plant name. Cassia is of Greek origin and it means cinnamon. So you know me, I love coziness, I love hygge, and if anything would represent coziness or hygge, it would have to be cinnamon. It's the smell of baking, it's the ultimate sort of autumn colour. Everything to do with it is just associated with coziness. So I absolutely love the name Cassia and I think it's so underrated. It's 1,105 on the list, which does mean it is fairly high up the list in terms of rare names, but I've never heard anybody use it. What do you think of it? Okay, I have another Marmite name for you, but I absolutely love it. I don't think I would use it as a first name. It's another one of these names that would be perfect for the middle name spot. If you're a Sound of Music fan, then you can probably guess what it is. The name is Edelweiss. How amazing would this be? I am such a Sound of Music fan. It's a little bit geeky to say so, but I have watched that film so many times over the years. I used to watch the film with my nan um, every weekend when I used to stay over. Um, so it's a uh, film that has massive sort of personal significance for me. I even used to dream when I was a little girl that I would have a wedding dress like Maria Van Trapp's. The name Edelweiss is completely linked really to the sound of music. So if you're a fan of it, this would be a lovely way of sort of tying that in, in a quirky sort of middle name. Um, I think it would have to suit a very short, classic, safe 
sort of first name and then go really way out with the middle name. Edelweiss are also very delicate but very strong flowers. If you think of the conditions that they have to survive in, they are the ultimate sort of symbol of beauty and strength and overcoming odds. So if you have had quite difficult personal circumstances on your way to having a child, then Edelweiss might be your flower name. Incidentally, I also think it's a great alternative to the name Adele or Adelaide. I think it has that same sort of sound about it. What do you think? Raining things back a little bit, how about the name Sorrel? I think from memory I have featured the name Sorrel on a baby name list somewhere. If I can think which list it is, I will leave it linked. But I think this is a lovely sort of autumnal floral name. Um, it's of French origin and it means reddish brown. It's also used as a way of describing the colour of chestnut horses. So if you have a love of horse riding, a love of autumn, of cosiness, then sorrel could be the perfect choice for you. The next name on my list is more of sort of a gardening sort of related name, which is the name Gardenia. I think, again, it's very long, flowy, romantic sounding. I also think if you like the name Enid, as sort of a vintage throwback name, Gardenia might appeal to you because of the ending of the name. It's completely unranked. I can imagine it being a sort of an old school, old lady name. And I also think if you like hipster names, you'll probably like the name Gardenia. But weirdly, I also think if you like names like Gabriella, there is a sort of similarity in the sound to Gabriella and Gardenia. I think if you like flowy, A ending sounding names, then why not go for Gardenia? I definitely think you'd be setting a trend with it. Would you use it? Let me know what you think. Next up, another unranked name for you, and the name is Cardamine. I think this is gorgeous, and I think it reminds me of names like scarlet or crimson, rich sounding names. I think if you like Cassian for a boy, you would probably be drawn to the name Cardamine. Again, imagine it being sort of lovely handwritten and very flowy on the page. Okay, so my last name on the list, still a bit of a hippie choice, but definitely becoming more wearable is the name Meadow. Meadow is number 541 on the list, so I completely expect that in September's list when it's released, can imagine Meadow will have crept further on up into the charts, possibly around the 300 mark. That's my prediction anyway. I do love the name for its associations. You can just imagine, you know, fields with beautiful wildflowers in them. And I do think with a W ending, it will go with quite a lot of surnames. Particularly if you have a shorter sort of surname, I can imagine it going really nicely. So that's the end of this baby name list. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then please share it with a friend. Don't forget to hit subscribe because I'd love to have you around and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!